I was just putting in stuff that was getting to me. We can add whatever. Basically, I have the app stuff and anything I'm arguing with people over the week. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I'm in. All right. Okay, let's... All I see is the top ten why we hate that. Which I couldn't think of, an, I couldn't think of enough things to complete. Really? So, so, so you're mediocre. Oh, I could think of things. I just figured we'd finish the list as a group. <laughs> what is this link to coin? That is uh, the only coin thing. Yeah, that is pretty much uh, an, an app that it all but sums up the app mentality. Ah, so it's an uh, app. Basically, it's, hi, have your phone... Scan it basically plug a plug a fake credit card into your phone so you can scan all your credit cards into one credit card. But they're mocking an app here, right? This is not real, right? No, that's a real app. <laughs> They've made an app to do this. <laughs> I think the order now. This is not real. Yes, it is. You talking about the only coin site? Yes, it is. I. I can buy a whole lot. Oh, there you are. You're back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was fixing my coffee because my filter decided to break, so I got nothing like grains in my freaking. Well, we can go over the app thing real quick. See, I was heated back then. Yeah, hey, it, it, dude, we can go over whatever. I, I mean, it's the the, uh, ma the main tech things I saw this week were were half political related, and then I wound up on other shit. I'm like, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> to being solely internal storage. Yeah, it's, it's, um, I, I just think it's a, a bit, I, I just consider apps band-aids, essentially. It's, every app that I've ever used uh, outside of a game, uh, comparing it to the website is, is featureless compared to the website. It, that's, I, can, I just don't want to do the app because it's, it makes the phone or tablet useless to me if I can't do what and everything that I want to do on you know the website. Now that's not a problem on my Blackberry because my Blackberry is running the full web. But if I were to seriously have an iPhone or even uh, the way some like uh, some sites behave on Android, I'm not interested at all. Zero. And I'll hold, I'll hold on to my Blackberry as long as it takes uh, because I don't. It's kind of like the HTML5 thing. We're still waiting for HTML5. I, I still see Flash every freaking way in the DM universe. But, you know, back in, what, 2008, we were arguing this shit? It's now 2014. We're six years later, and it's stupid bullshit. 
Well, no, and then you have companies like Google trying to push it forward by doing probably the stupidest policy I've seen them implement yet, which is, hi, your browser is more than one version old? Yeah, you can't use it with anything Google. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Look, I, I made predictions years ago that what's going to happen is exactly uh, the way I see a lot of a, a lot of the uh, demand going is is try to get mobile to be what we have on the desktop. Because really, anything if you're not at least at the desktop, then you're just less than subpar. Well, and the and, o the only you're reason not computing, you're just bullshit. The only yeah. reason it's an issue is because um, pe designers couldn't figure out how to make use of a touch UI properly, so they dumbed everything down to the big shiny button mentality. And while the big shiny button sounds great, the reality is you can't do anything with a big shiny right. button. Exactly. <laughs> the, the, the iPhone? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was going to say, because basically they take the mentality of press the one big shiny button, and, oh, wait, what does that one big shiny button do? We have no fucking clue. <laughs> it, it is, like, the best example, like, when I go to eBay or something, this is an example on, like, Android, I shouldn't have to actually go and go to the full website using the browser in order to actually use every feature and function under the goddamn sun that the site offers when you have a quote unquote app for that that exactly. doesn't do the same fucking thing. But, but that's the same problem with almost every bank app, meetup, even Facebook, you know, all of them. It's like, hi, this is our site light, you know, minus all its functionality and features. <laughs> right. Well, it touches part of the problem, but. Ironically, when I complained about Touch years ago and how it was inferior to many things, lo and behold, now most tablet people that I see, other than using it for games, are using styluses again. I can't tell you how many styluses are now on sale to use for iPads and stuff like that. Gee, I wonder why. Because it's one of the reasons I've had Touch for freaking years, and there's a reason why it never took off. It sucks as a human input device. It's one you know, of the reasons I, I'm honestly considering for my next uh, Android phone, the Note. It's a Sa Samsung's Note series is actually designed to work that way. It's just... Silence. You know, at Amazon, everybody wonders why the original Kindle's still uh, popular. Because we don't give a shit about the Kindle. 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 Because we don't give a shit about swiping our freaking finger across the screen to simulate turning a page. I, I no, no. A fraction of a second to push a button and turn a stupid thing. I will disagree with that bit because that's one of the things that drives me nuts about my old school Kindle, which I still have and I love, and I love I love the Kindle technology, but when you are used to dealing with smartphones and tablets and other things, right, you're holding a device that's in this form factor, e even though I know I have these buttons and I see these arrows on the side of my Kindle, every so often I try and touch the screen because it's the behavior that's becoming well, you're, default. Okay, a behavior, but that is comparing behaviors, not that you have an uh, uncoordination of, of appropriate uh, uh, behavior per device. We're, I'm actually comparing when you're conscious of it, which is faster human input. Then, of course, the original Kindle, classic Kindle, is much faster uh, human input to turn a page than it is to swipe your finger. Yeah, because... It's, it's the same thing I show people who have iPhones who say, what kind of phone I have? You know, they can't recognize it's a Blackberry. They go, I thought that's a Blackberry, yeah. And, and they love how you can swipe up and see and sweep and see everything with a gesture. And I, and I always explain to them, look, I said, I'm not a fan of touch, but if you're going to do touch, this is how you, have, you, you should do it. And if, if it takes me five seconds with pushing stupid buttons or holding down buttons because they only want to have one fucking button, that's a problem. Well, it, 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 it's a huge it, human input problem. It, admittedly, the Android devices were better when they had the three physical buttons on the box. Yes. I agree. I, I agree. So, here's another good example. Where y'all were talking about Roku. Well, I love the Roku remote. For some reason, Apple can't get it up in their freaking asses that a home button 
is, is worth a million dollars. Do you know on Apple TV, you gotta keep hitting the fuck menu button and it goes back, 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 back. So if you're all the way in like Hulu Plus and some stupid search, you're clicking the fucking thing like 15 times. Oh. But on Roku, one button, home. I mean, you're gonna argue to me simplicity. Simplicity of what? I don't give a shit what the fucking remote looks like. It, it, the point is a stupid is, is a computer device to serve a, a, a function to me. And if I gotta sit there for 30 seconds to go all the way back to home, what use is it when I'm on a roadway and just head home and I'm done? I didn't know that. You're telling me with the Apple TV is literally a scroll in layer, scroll out yes. layers. There's no yes. universal you leak. Back out of something. You gotta go back, back, menu, 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 menu. I would be afraid to scroll down into stuff then, because half the time when I get myself buried in Netflix or Amazon Prime or Hulu, I'm like, I want to go back to the main start. You know what? Home, get back in the channel. It's just exactly. <laughs> exactly. But, I don't know. You'll never convince legions of people, you know, they just want to do it. They want to do it. That's fine. You can take the extra 30 seconds. But no. really, I, I know that they're bitching about it, and Trey just want to admit it. <laughs> because, I mean, there's, there's, there's sanity to things, you know. Um, but, yeah, the biggest the biggest problem I have, the, the biggest problem that I have with apps, other than if they're, like, standalone games, is that they don't supplant the purpose of, of, of what they originally written for. It's kind of like even mobile websites. I like using my Blackberries. I, I go to full-blown sites. They're not... That, that uh, touch friendly, of course not. Uh, but I would much rather have full feature, pinch and zoom to hit click my button, than not have the feature or ability at all. Well, uh, uh, honestly, I, I can use a stylus, which is better than my finger, and have, hit those things. In, in the uh, same logic, I would also argue that all websites that are still making a separate mobile version of their site are caught in the same app mentality. The idea yes. that somehow they need to have a separate one. All you need is a a, if, a a basic, very simple, it's like a 50 line or less if else logic test of what form factor somebody is using to access your site and re-theme it accordingly. If you have drop down menus, replace them with mobile friendly click menus. Where, okay, it's a two-click process, you know, jab, jab, instead of uh, other thing. But that's a, that's a minor UI tweak. You in no way, shape, or form need to make a separate site, redo. It's like, oh, this is what the mobile people need. No, everybody needs your site. That's... <laughs> I, I mean, and here's the other thing about apps, is that they make apps for things that you are already built in, a desktop OS, but you have to pay for it to have some stupid ass subpar operating system because for whatever reason our limitation is not there. But yet some app developer tries to come up with a solution, which the original company who put it out should have done. Uh, but no, you gotta pay for it. And well, I, wait, wait, I have a question. How is that any differently than the fact that you have to pay to get spaces back on OS X now? Yeah, that's a, a, another direct complaint. Yeah. <laughs> but I hate, I take, I still want Snow Leopard. Okay. On my Mac Pro, so. But that's getting old enough that you're going to have a hard time keeping that much longer. Mm. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, look, I, I'm not a video, you know, the things that I do don't really need the latest and greatest. I mean, well, no, the problem the latest and greatest to people when they get these new OSs. They really haven't done much to the core speed. It's not the core you're going to have a problem with. Unfortunately, we're in a forced upgrade tech environment now where a lot of companies are basically going, it's not that it can't work, it's that we think your version is too old, so we're not going to let it work. Well, what I'm getting at is, is what benefit do I get by upgrading to Lion or, or what, what Mavericks or whatever? I have Mavericks on the, on the my new Mac Mini out there. I, I, Whatever. So it's, it's got annoying, stupid-ass message shit that I turned off and uh, a lot of things that I have met did. Uh, because in the line of work that I do, I don't need to see uh, that, that kind of stuff come up. So, I mean, it, it becomes annoying. How everything goes to that stupid-ass full screen, like when you click and it moves over. Jesus, really? That's just well, you, you see, if, if you would buy your magic pad, that would make sense. <laughs> I 
But yeah, the, I, I, it's, to me, apps are a step backwards. And it can, and it, and it can be con proven within computer context. You're, not, you're never going to prove it to an emotional consumer or argument that what feels or whatever. But when you, when you want to argue ones and zeros in, in what we have in desktops and what is, and how things can be approached, I, I just think it's an indefensible argument. Well, uh, honestly, uh, it's going to be a huge cost that thing because indirectly, and we're getting to the point that this is going to adversely affect productivity, which will adversely affect people's wages because they're not going to be as efficient operating on their computer because it takes them now two minutes to do something they could do in 15 seconds. Therefore, they get less work done. Therefore, they're worth less. Uh, I've seen, yeah, seen a lot of custom apps. Like there was an uh, unnamed energy company that wrote, uh, wrote a custom app, but I was intrigued by it because they afforded more privileges than I would say a standard developer would be. And uh, so I think I think uh, some of that is going on uh, for some of the things. But who knows? The PCs aren't going anywhere, clearly. So, you know. <laughs> well, uh, you know, Bob's being damn quiet here. <laughs> are you still here, Bob, or are you just snickering? Uh, Bob, Bob is still here. Okay. Um, it, it's honestly, I think we're having a clash, uh, a clash of user classes, uh, which is, I hate to use the word class involved, but the reality is you have people who are content consumers, and that's pretty much the only thing they use a computer for. And, that's right. yep. and then you have people who are actually using the computer as a tool to get work done, and for them, a appliance content-consuming device is wholly and solely inadequate. So it's it, it's a okay. sh so. I buy that, but, but content consumption. The biggest content provider is the internet, and yet the the second largest market share mobile phone uh, that is out there. Is lucky if it can see sixty percent of it. And I don't disagree with that, but it, it comes to do with: are is that class of user even really using that forty, that forty to sixty percent of the internet they're missing? If that makes any sense at all, because they're consuming, they're not interact. If that makes any sense at all, you know, it's it, admittedly if they can tweet, they can Facebook. And they can be told why the sky is falling today. They're happy. <laughs> I, would, I, I think. Well, I liked reading the news somewhere where someone had said that Facebook's numbers of real users are declining rapidly. So that that was a happy day for me. And uh, and I know Facebook is probably sees that and knows that too. That's what the whole WhatsApp acquisition was probably about. Well, I, I think that has more to do with the fact that just like uh, Google recently, Facebook has made some really stupid decisions that have alienated their power user base. And the Facebook, there are power Facebook users, as crazy as that term sounds. Talk about your oxymoron. Um, it's like all of a sudden they couldn't do what they were what they were doing anymore. And admit, it, go ahead, Bob. Oh, Google and Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> that all? Um, I think Facebook would have been better off by BBM than they were, they were uh, WhatsApp, personally. But <laughs> yeah, BBM, dude, I saw all these articles. You're right, Bob. They're, they're, it's the only secured uh, uh, platform out there for messaging, and, and uh, this, the new CEO is really um, going to beef it up, I think, to, to try to to displace WhatsApp. And, you know, I, I was going to say that, that I know there's another one, I think it's called Telegram, that is about their end to end crypto um, messaging service. But, Somebody was uh, trying to get me to look at that the other day. I, I hear interesting things about it. <laughs> it, it Bob, it, what's your take on the apps? I mean, so you're pretty much in the same boat as us? Or? There's a reason I switched to Blackberry from Android. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surrounded! <laughs> so you're happy with your the black rare? Uh, I'm, I'm rocking a, I think like I my primary tablet, and I'm rocking a, a uh, 
a Z10 as my primary model. And, and this is, and this is, and, and this is someone who, um, you know, my last Android phone was the model of Razer. So, my um, life still So, I mean, it, 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 I'm a few releases removed from Android now, but um, no, I've been, I've been rocking a black, uh, Z10 for about, I don't know, five or six months now, give or take. Um, actually, the, I'm, I'm using that as my wireless hotspot right now, so I can do that. <laughs> because, uh, yeah. because Verizon is going to hate my unlimited plan. <laughs> yeah, they give me one too. They give me unlimited Wi-Fi hotspot and all that shit. That's cool. Well, but because I'm grandfathered in under the old plans still, uh, okay. uh, I, I have been using it like, because I don't have internet right now. <laughs> Everything I do is based from my phone. <laughs> so I'm, I'm using the laptop hooked to the Wi-Fi. <laughs> hey, I don't, hey, I've done that many times, believe it or not. And I'm actually pleased with the speeds Verizon has uh, on, the, on their LTE. At least the, the whole connection, I never really have any issues. No, if, if you want to go that route, honestly, if you have a grandfathered Verizon plan, like both of y'all do, or in one of the areas where T-Mobile's network's good enough, you really can do that. You can have your mobile be your only internet connection and just put your phone in tether mode. And <gasps> yep. Yeah, I mean, that, uh, right now that's all I'm doing. I just love the full web experience on BlackBerry. I mean, BlackBerry doesn't know how to say no. <laughs> Which, so, you know, it honestly so. makes you wonder how many more versions of Windows Internet Explorer, what are we on now, 12 or 11, 12 or 13, uh, um, Slate version and Android and iOS are going to insist on this, oh, it has to be a separate Internet because it's... It, 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 Android started to back off of that, but not in a smart way. They still try and handle media and plug-in content differently. <laughs> it's, uh, for me, I'm using Android and get it over with. I use the uh, but you know what? If the site is that tedious, usually I carry my playbook with me in hotspot and playbook, which gives me a little bit more of a screen real estate and I think it will be exactly. easier. Yeah. I, don't, I, I will say um, I like a lot of, like, if, if we want to get into the things that we like about BlackBerry. <laughs> sure. Uh, uh, and today on the BlackBerry Power Hour. <laughs> Like you just have like like three or four of those like e 
emails or something, something that's just lingering, but you, you sit there and you scroll through them and it's like, where the hell are they? So all you do is pinch the zoom and, oh, hey, look, click, click, click. Hey, look, I just got rid of all the notifications. Exactly. Yeah. I do like also how they added to the home screen that you can now get detailed without even unlocking the oh, yeah. prior. That is so cool. Yeah, no doubt. But it, it, those are some of the things that, um, I don't get me wrong, there are some things like, um, as far as tablets are concerned, like, to me, the, uh, the playbook is functional, but it I usually touch of anything for it. But, but I usually, I use it mostly as an eater here more than anything else. Um, yeah, and I mean apps even, and I'm not talking about the apps we were talking about previously, like games, it's not very... Okay, I have to ask you Blackberry Knots something, and this is not to, to diss on Blackberry, this is because I, uh, I hate to admit it, but I do like that browser experience over that, and I'm getting due to upgrade both my phone, and the gods help me, I may have to get a slate. Um... <laughs> Uh, okay, it, it's as far as for interacting with whether we love or hate apps. The reality is you have to interact with some things through apps. Some Can, things you do if it's a social network. Well, or or, or, email guy. or or somebody wants to talk to me, email my. No, no, no. I, I, I and I'm I, I, I'm okay with app, that. I don't care about the game. Else they have out there. I don't care That's about like email exists. No, I don't care about the games. People who want to contact me can either contact me by phone, they can email me, uh, they are not going to get a hold of me on Twitter or Google+. Plus. I go to Google+, Plus to acquire information, I go to Twitter as a news feed, I interact with it not so much, um, and, but so I don't care about that stuff. What I do care about is the ability to, I want the big experience, but I also want a good appliance device augmentation. So it needs to play nice with like um, the Plex Media Network, the Roku, the uh, various things like that, the various appliance things that are becoming more and more as all our homes become smart homes. Is that at least developed enough that it, I'm going to have to, oh, you can't buy this one because only this one that costs twice as much supports BlackBerry? Or is that at least supported enough? I don't know. You know, I've, I've never tried to interact with my Plex Media Server through through my BlackBerry, um, but it can participate as a as a as a drive. See, that's why I love. I can map, you know, from from day one, I can map network run this damn thing to my network, and let it even sit and just plug in and hit anything I want from any computer um, on my system uh, to it. Uh, and if you could get into the content that's in the various drives over the network that way, as long as the UI is decent, that's that's a rather technical walk around, but you can at least get to it. Right, but see, I've never, but I don't know, I, I, I'm pretty sure that, well, I don't know if Plex has something. I'm trying uh, to think off the top, because I know they support iOS and Android well. They even support uh, Linux. It's, yeah, the server side of Plex. No, no, they have a, they have a Linux, it, it's, you have to be a little Is it the client you're looking at for Plex or, or the server? The server is going to be a dedicated computer yeah. in a closet somewhere. I'm looking about accessing the content. Like, I can access my Plex content on my Roku, my Linux box, a Windows machine. If somebody okay. comes in here on an iPad, they can access the same thing on any of the Android devices. I haven't ever tried on BlackBerry. Uh, not, I can't tell you. I mean, I have, I'm going to have to. Well, I've never really wanted to access my Plex media server. Okay. Uh, from my phone. Okay, that's just something I can think of off the top of my head, where because BlackBerry is kind of the outsider at this point, as like, and I don't. It, that's what I'm wondering because I've I've bounced back and forth on if I should get one when I replace my I'll phone, bet you there's a way. or replace my there's slate, there's or if it's gonna be like it was in Linux five years ago, where it's like, hi, you're the outsider. Hi, go walk all the way around the building and use the other entrance. <laughs> And since I can connect, 
see from my library right now. I'm looking at. It. See, I can see my Mac Pro on here. I can see my um, uh, my Windows machine from here, and I can access the the, the folders that way. As long as it can act, I mean, if so you could, I bet you it could hit the movies you wanted and play it in its own video browser. But as far as a like, client, that's true. Which, which admittedly, that, I mean, that that that's kind of the long way around to. to that's an interesting, interesting, interesting question because I use Plex. You know, I use it. So, it's useful. You just dump all your yeah. stuff in the Flex server and let it manage the network stuff, and it says, there it is. Yeah, Blackberry's not on there. It has Windows, Apple, Android, Google TV, Chromecast, Roku, Samsung, LG, Linux. There's a Plex app for the Playbook. Is there a Plex app for the Playbook? Really? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, is it only going to be the slates and not the phones? Is it... That was going to be the other way I was going to ask because you can emulate Android on BlackBerry, and how would oh, yeah, that? Just bring it right over. Right? Yeah, how would how yeah. is that experience? I mean, is there any lag? Is it basically oh, oh like? It's, 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 my experience with the Android apps on BlackBerry so far for emulation is hit or miss. Kind of um, like Wine Wine was on Linux about two not, or three years ago. No, 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 no not that bad. But it, but it works. Programming is not native. That's why there's actually BlackBerry goes built for BlackBerry because so many people have yeah, gone over Android apps yeah. because of the lack of apps. Yeah, because uh, the built for BlackBerry stuff uses the Cascade stuff that they. Uh, yeah, which is awesome. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but uh, no, in the, the new version of uh, BB10, you can actually just download the Android uh, APK and install it right from the phone. Which is a new feature, FYI. Yeah, they've made that process easier and easier over the years. I've noticed. <laughs> I, I was gonna say because I'm still uh, like I'm still using the uh, BB10 Playbook app manager for Chrome, just so I could do Android apps on the Playbook. Uh, but uh, once I found that, I was like, oh, okay, look, a whole lot of reason not to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I mean, do you have to jump through hoops if you have to import an app over like that to do it, or is it basically no, they have a backdoor that. access to the Play Marketplace, whether Google likes it or not? Uh, like I said, as long as, uh, as long as you can find the APK, you can pretty much do whatever. I mean, the, uh, and BlackBerry does not poo-poo this. BlackBerry is, in, is, is full on, go for it. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I'm sure Google poo-poos it. <laughs> That's... That's I've, what I've heard people have installed the Google Play Store on BlackBerry phones. So <laughs> okay. You want to talk about the ultimate? Uh, screw you. See, I, 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 and I also really love the performance of uh, like it's just navigating navigating a system is for me the most crucial because I do a lot of to email to the application, copying and pasting, and needing to either edit, revise. So I'm, I'm usually using three or four apps, and it has to be quick, you know, because it's nothing more frustrating than switching between apps and not being able to get, you know, it's just... Yeah, I had a thought about the... It's not WebOS, but I've got to be close enough, maybe it's close enough to me. I don't think anything will ever beat the, the navigation that I've ever done on WebOS, but, but BlackBerry 10 is damn freaking close. Um, the, the only thing I will say is the one thing that I missed about... Um, uh, and the next version of uh, oh, QNX, okay. from the playbook uh, as opposed to BB10 is the uh, I don't like how multitasking is handled so much on which one? Uh, on BB10 uh, I prefer more of the flat line approach of the uh, yeah you know playbook so that, they're fired for that because they were using the card system the playbook is a lot like what yeah. yeah, 
and, and so so all you had to do is you know hit up and oh hey look everything went away. Whereas if you if you want to close a running app on you know BB10, you have to make sure you're hitting the X. <laughs> Whereas yeah. you know swipe it away. I, my my suspicion on that would be people were accidentally swiping, so they decided it to make it a little more difficult. Um, I just like novice users who didn't realize that's what it did. Yeah, but Bob is absolutely correct on that. You cannot swipe the stuff away. You do have to hit the X. Well, which to me is like, <laughs> like I get the stack of cards. I get the reason why you can only do eight applications running at a time and that kind of stuff. I, I get that, but it's just like it's so goddamn annoying. <laughs> Uh, is there a way to like plug your what's black? Annoying? What's annoying? What's annoying, Yeah, Not being able to swipe away app or the application. Oh, oh yeah, so, yeah. Get with just one finger to measure, like you can with like nine percent of the rest of the OS. <laughs> and, but oh. have you ever experienced in the playbook? One thing that I always enjoyed is that it it tells you you've got too much open. I've had that message pop up on the playbook, but I'm not on BlackBerry 10. Well, it's because BlackBerry 10 gives you an artificial limitation of not only being able to run a simultaneous app. Running, I use that term loosely. But it won't um, auto close like like iOS has done to me in my past. I mean, it just I like push the whole fucking app that I had open out of memory to uh, it was ridiculous. Well, and admittedly, an, an, most uh, Android will do on that thing is it just it gives you a panic. It says, "Hi, I can't do anything right now." It's uh, is there a way to plug your BlackBerry into like a USB or something and hack out that artificial limitation? Go, yes, I realize that you want me to stay to eight things at a time because of resource limitations, BlackBerry, but I want to run twelve or six. Like, change it, change the yeah, limit. I think, I think it's hard coded into the OS, honestly. I'm not 100% sure. No, that's like, I mean, yeah, a limit like that. Which is, which is a real operating system, so it's not going to allow interrupting. So it really, the way programming works on that is actually on a scheduled basis versus an interrupted basis. And, and there's no, like, a simple come in and just, like, change the hard code number limit? Microsoft because when Microsoft bought Skype for the longest time there was true development being taken with the separate Skype apps to actually have them match the platform you're delivering to when it 
when Microsoft took over, it pretty much just became, hi, let's just take the biggest one and port it everywhere. And yeah, that doesn't translate well in some cases. Because of how the OS works with that cascade tile effect that they use, you know, every corner has some type of different function. You can tell it uses the Android mantra where it has like the back button on the top to go back the layer. God. So it, you try swiping back and it doesn't do anything. You're like, what the freak? <laughs> now, that's actually something I would have to ask too because as ports like that occur, are there going to be. Uh, like the same issue we were talking about with the Kindle, where like you because you just have an ingrained behavior, are you gonna fight with your ingrained behaviors on the platform, or is that basically just like Skype difficulty and like it largely not a problem? Uh -huh. Well, I mean, y'all are the I'm ones. Doing enough, but but more and more, I would say there are some apps that are are on BB10 that I didn't think would ever be there. Um, I know that there, one of my friends has Instagram. I'm not, I, I, again, I'm not social media crap like that for me personally. Uh, you know, my Mr. Bit 10 stuff is, but there's no way in hell I'm going around taking pictures and doing all that bullshit. So, uh, the, there are apps that, that my other friend who does do social stuff, um, they, they have an app for it now that there wasn't before. Um, that WhatsApp crap that Facebook bought is, is on there. Um, so there are some things that, that I've heard that I don't use that are showing up. And now Skype, which I didn't really search for before. You can tell I don't spend a whole lot of time in the apps department. <laughs> Well, it, like my, I mean, the, the 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 light from which I'm asking for, because initially with Android, this was a problem because developers just assumed everybody had Apple, so they kind of didn't. And every so often, you were like, "Well, you're making me use an app, but you're not making the app for Android." And I'm wondering how much you're going to run into that problem embracing BlackBerry at this point. Because the general impression people have, regardless of whether it's true or not, as I hear it all the time, is like, oh, is BlackBerry still around? And it's, and I know that's not true. Yeah, a lot of people are shocked to see me, you know, BlackBerry right here. They're just like, whoa, that's yeah. BlackBerry. So, I mean, yeah, don't feel bad. I get about the same response. Yeah. So it's basically, it, and it was ignorance. I mean, it took about two years of Android having traction for developers to realize, holy shit, why the hell aren't we catering to this audience? I'm just wondering how much of that at this point you're going to really have. You know, will you hit, I can't do it because I picked the, the Betamax. It's better, but everybody's thinking about VHS. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I mean, I think there's, there's, there's so many pros and cons on on whatever the the, the, the platform you choose from iOS to Android. But to me, there there is for, I guess for most users, some things are just marginal. But for me, if it does, if it if it can't serve its function uh, outside of you know playing Angry Birds or whatever the fuck it is, and posting pictures on the internet, I, I, I can't use the, I can't use the phone. I mean, it's it's. Why, why spend two hundred dollars in a whole data plan and all that if, if I, I, I really can't use it? So, there's there BlackBerry serves serves uh, the critical functionality and productivity that I need, uh, but I don't know if it's gonna. Uh, all I can say is that there it, it has limitations in a lot of departments in, in terms of apps and social stuff, but it, where there's a will, there's a way because anytime I've searched for something and to see if it can be done. There's someone, you know, doing it, and, and BlackBerry does not uh, frown upon anything you can find on Android. I, 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 I have two. I have a two. I have a handful of applications. I will, I will give you. Um, 
the reason I would get a slate would be I don't want to lag my laptop around, but I want to stay connected. I want I want full websites. I want the ability to interact with my media and still have the appliance device because I want to have a an appliance device that needs to serve as an appliance device. And I would care a lot if MetaTrader is properly supported on there because that's the main reason I'm considering getting any kind of slate is I would like to be able to keep track of stuff I've left open <laughs> if I'm away. <laughs> um, and right now, I know they support Android and iOS. I don't know if they support BlackBerry. Well, I don't see it. Um, but they do on the Playbook. So If it'd be on the Playbook, Blackberry, then that would mean I need to get playbook, a Playbook. Uh, BlackBerry 10 version's got to be on the Verizon. In my, in my thinking. So. Alright. Anything else we want to say on this topic? <laughs> well, not really. I mean, it's just uh, just wait for, and it, it'll happen. You know, think we'll we'll catch up. You know, we'll catch up, and it'll. it'll no, no, up. very much. All the, uh, in my opinion, all the appliance devices are like where GUI computers were in the early '90s where like every internet service provider was making a internet service provider app in their own browser and their own network like everybody it, and then they figured out wait a minute the OS can do this <laughs> so oh, check it out uh, I, I loaded the Skype thing in, in the, it's showing uh, my call to you as ongoing here from the phone That's cool. okay Uh, anything else to say on this, Bob? The old quiet Bob? Hello, Bob. Silent Bob. Yes, what? Quiet Bob's still here. <laughs> <laughs>